Hello viewers, in this video, I will talk about summary and analysis of the poem, The Nun's Priest Tale, written by Geoffrey Chaucer. So without any delay, let's begin our discussion. In the uh, poem, The Nun, Nun's Priest Tale, there is a very poor widow who lives in a small cottage with her two daughters. And her main possession is a noble cock called uh, John Tickler. Okay, uh, I'm sorry for the pronunciation. John Tickler and this cock or this rooster it was very beautiful and nowhere in the land is there any cock who can match him in crowning and he was the master so he thought of seven lovely hands okay and the loveliest of this was the beautiful and gracious lady uh, party lot and she held the heart of the John Tickler and shares in all his glories and all his in all his problems. One spring, mo one spring morning, John Tickler he awakened from a terrible dream of a beast roaming in the yard trying to seize him. But this this beast color and markings were much the same as a fox. Then Lady Partilot cries out, "For shame! Fie on you, heartless coward!" for on you heartless and tells him that being afraid of dreams is cowardly and that by sowing such fear he has lost her love and then she told him that he dreamt because he ate too much and that it it was well known that dreams had no meaning and he simply needed a laxative then John Tickler graciously thanked Lady Partilot, but he quoted authorities who maintained that dreams had a very definite meaning and insisted that he did not need uh, he did not need any uh, laxative. Later, John Tickler caught sight of a fox named Don Russell who was hi hiding near the farmyard. Then John Tickler began to run, but the fox gently called out that he only came to hear John Tickler's beautiful voice. Hearing this, the vain cock shut his eyes and burst out into song. At that moment, the fox raced to the cock, grabs him about the neck and made off with him. The hands in the barnyard it made such a terrible commotion that they aroused the entire household then soon the widow her two daughters the dogs hands geese ducks and even the bees they were chasing the fox later john tickler suggested to the fox to turn around and shout insult at his per persuasor then the fox thinking john tickler's idea a good one opened his mouth and john tickler nimbly escaped to a treetop then the fox tried once again to lure john tickler down by compliments and flattery but the rooster had learned his lessons at the conclusion of the tale the host praised the nun's priest observing the priest's magnificent physic he commented that if the priest were secular his manhood would require not just seven hands but seventeen then he thanked her priest for the fine tale and turned to another for the next day okay now let's try to know about the analysis the nun's priest tale is one of chaucer's most brilliant tales and it functions on several levels the tale is an outstanding example of the literary style known as bestiary or a beast fable in which animals behave like human beings consequently this type of fable is often an insult to man or a commentary on man's fo foibles to suggest that animals behave like humans to suggest that humans often behave like animals besides this tale is told using the technique of the mock heroic epic and which takes a trivial event and elevates it into something of great universal import. Uh, furthermore, Alexander Pope's poem, The Rap of the Lock, also is an example uh, of a mock heroic composition and it treats a trivial event, the theft of a lock of hair in this case, as if it were sublime or bigger. Thus, when Don Russell the Fox runs off it, John Tickler in his jaws, the chase, the chase that ensues involves every creature on the premises and the entire scene is narrated in the elevated language found in great epics where such language was used to enhance the splendid deeds of epic heroes. Chaucer uses elevated languages to describe a fox catching a rooster in a barnyard, a far cry from the so, uh, from the classic epics, and the chase itself reminds one of Achilles chasing Hector around the battlements in the Iliad. To compare the plight of John Dickler to that of Homer's Hector and to suggest that the chase of the fox is an epic chase similar to classical epics indicates the comic absurdity of the situation. The more he heroic tone is also used in other instances when the nuns priest described the capture of Dun Russell and refers to the event in terms of other prominent traitors referring to the fox as a new uh, Iscariot, a second Ganlom and a false Hippocrite, Greek Sinon and when the barnyard animals discuss high philosophical and theological questions for Lady Partilot and John 
Don Tickler to discuss divine foreknowledge in a high intellectual and more tone in the context of Bernard. Chickens is the height of the comic irony. Uh, so we must also re remember the cause of discussion of divine foreknowledge. Lady Pardelot thinks that John Tickler's dream or nightmare was the result of his constipation and she recommends a laxative. But John Tickler's rebuttal is a brilliant use of classical sources that comment on dreams and is a marvelously comic means of proving that he is not constipated and does not need a laxative. And throughout the mock epic, mankind loses much of its human dignity and is reduced to animal values. So the nun's priest ideas and positions are set up in the genially ironic attitude toward both the simple life of the widow and the life of the rich and the great as represented by the cock John Tickler. And in Chaucer's English, the name means clear singing. The nun priest's opening line set up the contrast and, and a poor old boy with little property and small income leads a sparse life and it does not cost much for her to get along. The implication is that living the humble Christian life is easier for the poor than for rich who have, like John Tickler, many obligations and great responsibilities. After all, if John Tickler does not grow at dawn, the sun cannot rise. And the nun priest, uh, it also contrasts the two human world of the poor and the rich in the description of the poor widow and the elegant John Tickler. The widow's board and hell bedroom was full sooty, uh, sooty that is black from the heart flame where she had eaten many a slim or slender meal. Notice the contrast, the term board and hell, it comes from courtly verse of the time and conjures up the image of a castle. The idea of a sooty bower or hall is absurd and the rich would never allow such a thing. Yet soot is inevitable in pigeon's heart and from the pigeon's point of view, the clean Cleanliness, fetus of the rich may also be absurd. A slender meal or slender meat would of course be unthinkable among the rich, but it is all the poor widow has. Likewise, the widow has no great, uh, great need of any poignant sauce because he has no gamey food like deer, son, ducks, and do on, uh, uh, go on, and uh, nor meats preserved past their season and no aristocratic recipe. She has no uh, dainty morsel to pass through her throat, but when Chaucer substitutes the word throat, uh, for the expected leaves, the dainty morsel that the image calls up is no longer very dainty. Then the aristocratic disease gout does not keep the widow from dancing, but it, it's unlikely that she dances anyway, and dancing is for the young or rich as a... Uh, as a pious lower class Christian, she scorns dancing of all kinds. In short, the whole description of the widow looks ironically at both the rich and the poor. Uh, so that's it for this video, and there are many things. You can pause it, then you can take a screenshot, then you, you can note it down. Your choice. I, I will just slide this PDF for you if you want to make it a note.